this is a presentation that I've been uh, using in some uh, events to teach people about DHK, and usually the presentation is uh, made uh, an hour long. So uh, I was requested by the DevConf organizers to try to to make it shorter because in, term, in times of pandemic, everybody is uh, tired of long presentations. So it's kind of gonna it's gonna be a little bit of a speed run uh, because it's a longer presentation. Uh, I put in this uh, address the slides and also links to the resources I have. And he also has a video of a longer version of this presentation that I presented in another conference. If you want to see me going through more details and all the things I'm going to be mentioning. Uh, so yeah, before I get to that, uh, I work in GNOME for about 10 years now. I work uh, for Red Hat in the last six years in the desktop team, uh, mostly developing GNOME and Fedora. Uh, I work in GNOME Boxes, which is our virtualization front end. So I end up touching a lot of GTK applications and uh, I've been committed to the newcomers initiative in GNOME that tries to bring new people to, to the project. And one of the initiatives that we do is to teach people how to contribute to existing projects. And another one is how to write applications from scratch because uh, the Linux ecosystem, unfortunately, uh, still lacks a lot of applications in comparison to other ecosystems. And uh, uh, a lot of folks uh, don't develop native applications for, for lack of documentation and, and things like this. And I admit that GTK uh, doesn't have a, a documentation that is as good as uh, the other two kits, let's say. But uh, we are progressing on that, and this presentation is uh, another step towards uh, making GTK more approachable. Uh, usually, I would go, I would have one slide for each one of those bullet points, and then I'll go in detail and everything. But uh, since uh, the time constraint here, I'm actually going to just talk a bit about it and then get into demo time where I'm going to be writing uh, a GTK application and just trying to talk at the same time and uh, trying to, to communicate these concepts. Uh, why do I do so? And yeah, the demo presentations are everything that can go wrong, right? So let's let's hope it's gonna work. But uh, to start with, who is using GTK? If you're using the GNOME desktop or if you're using a desktop that is based in GNOME, uh, you're likely using GTK applications. Uh, XFC and uh, Mate and all, they ship GTK applications. Uh, I also know that Firefox draws its, its Chrome, like the window declarations and all. Uh, using GTK on Linux, uh, Steam uses it. Uh, we have spoken to some folks at Konami that they are using GTK internally, but for the nature of proprietary software, uh, they cannot tell us specifically why they are using. But GTK is widely used on on desktop land. Uh, unfortunately, uh, our multi-platform story is not as complete as other toolkits. So if you were to develop something that you expect to run. Uh, in a phone or an embedded device, and Windows and macOS, maybe GTK might not be for you, but uh, there has been a constant improvement on our Windows bindings and uh, macOS bindings. So the story is, is changing and GTK is catching up. And when it comes to desktop applications, it's very delightful to develop applications with GTK. So if you get experience with that, you, you're going to see the, the clear uh, advantages. Uh, the key concepts that, uh, that GTK is designed on is the idea that a widget, a uh, UI element, can either be the final widget or a container that packs other widgets. So you are, we are basically adding boxes and adding items to boxes and organizing things like this, and this is going to be much more uh, visible to you once we get to the practice part. Uh, GTK introspection uh, is another topic that is important to cover here. Is that what allows us to write uh, applications in Python, JavaScript, Vala, various other programming languages uh, that, that GTK has bindings to. And this allows us to write GTK in C, GTK developed in C, and consume it throughout these uh, programming languages. So, thanks to GeoDeck introspection, the example I'm going to write today is written in Python and is going to, to be calling GTK widgets that have been written in C. Uh, the pros and cons is exactly what I mentioned about the multi-platform story. Uh, the animations are also kind of lacking in the past, but now in GTK4 that is newly released, uh, the animation API has improved uh, significantly. Uh, another part that I want to cover a bit is the tooling, so the IDE that you can use and the debugging and other tooling that you can use while developing GTK applications, and the distributing aspect uh, that nowadays we have this. Uh, future of technology that is able to run uh, applications on flatpak containers and this it's groundbreaking for us and not just for 
uh, internal testing and things like this, but also for distributing applications to end users uh, across distribution boundaries. But anyway, let's uh, get to the practice because uh, as far as I can tell, I don't have much uh, time. Also, you have some issue with the sound quality. Let me try to change the microphone to this camera. One. I wonder if this improves the situation. I'm going to hope it does. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to continue forward. Please let me know if things are not working. So uh, our ID is GNOME Builder, and GNOME Builder can bootstrap a project for you. So this saves us a lot of time. Once you are learning a platform, you don't want to actually have to learn the whole picture before you get to do something useful with it. And uh, I like to, to be able to start from some boilerplate project and evolve from it, and then later on just clarify this concept. Uh, in the presentation that I linked, uh, I actually go through bootstrapping a project and describing the files one by one. But here, since we are constrained with time, uh, I want to simply just start an application as fast as possible. Uh, the application is going to be a web browser. I think it, a web browser uh, is useful for showing how we can use GTK, also linking to WebKit GTK, which is the web engine that we're going to be using, so how you can create real, practically useful uh, applications. I'm just going to go check the chat a bit because I was, yeah, nobody comment. So I hope the, the audio continues. Uh, so uh, the project name you described in Builder, uh, it's basically uh, the, the typical project name that you're going to see, like Firefox, Nautilus. And then the application ID is a reverse DNS name that uh, makes your application unique. Uh, this is going to be used for the Dbus activation, for app App stream data, so for instance, for your application to show up on uh, app stores. Uh, this is also used for um, desktop files, so the, 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 the files that describe how your application launchers look on various launchers, so in GNOME Shell, when I type Firefox, what describes the icon name, the human readable name, and things like this. So yeah, we're going to just create an org.gnome.browser because I'm not feeling creative today, and pick the language as Python. Here in the bottom, there are templates, and we want to create a template that is just a basic GNOME application. So by creating a project, uh, GNOME Builder uh, is going to bootstrap the project with the, the, the initial files that we need. Uh, here in the very top, uh, you can control the build and, uh, and everything, and see also that it's building against the runtime, and um, uh, it has version of a runtime. So we're just going to go into the details about it uh, very quickly. Uh, so this is specifically a whole flat pack. So the application is going to write this manifest that describes how the application should be built. And this allows us to create a flat pack for, for, for this application. So the manifest describes the app ID that we entered before, the runtime. So the runtime is everything that your application is going to depend on that is GNOME specific. So the, the org.gnome.platform is the GNOME runtime. Uh, KDE has its own runtime, so you can link against the KDE specific libraries. And the way uh, runtimes in Flatpak are implemented is that they inherit from other runtimes. So there's the free desktop runtime that has these very elementary building blocks that both GNOME and KDE runtimes use and, and, and all. Same thing about the SDK. So these are libraries and headers and things that you need to compose your application. Uh, and then here we come to the finish arts, which in the Flatpak manifest, uh, this concerns the permissions your application has. These are not uh, portal permissions, so these are not the permissions you see like um, application wants to have access to your camera, authorized. These are runtime permissions. Uh, these are uh, hardcore, uh, hard coded static permissions. So these are our permission that your application cannot uh, function without. So basically, our application needs network access, uh, IPC, so we can access the bus, and uh, these sockets for the, the display servers for both X11 and Wave. Since our application is a user-facing application, there's no point on keeping the files that get extracted into this uh, path. So there is a thing of comment here, but that's a just a detail. The important part is this modules list that uh, you can bundle applications and libraries. So for instance, I will be able to add here another JSON entry and just bundle another library that doesn't belong to the runtime. So my application can uh, use and link against things that are distributed in the runtime but can also bundle uh, its own 
internal libraries and, and dependencies. So this is very convenient to to to, to distribute an application like this and, and once for all solve the, the Linux fragmentation problem. Let's say. So uh, one of the modules that is described is the very own application. So here we have the name of the application, the build system, and the sources. So the builder changed it to this local path, but uh, in the final version of my application, this could be a tarball or could be uh, the Git repository uh, online. So for everybody who is building the flat pack to be able to obtain the sources. So yeah, before I progress, I want to check the chat again. Okay, so. Okay, so it seems that it's working. So the Mizan file describes the very basic things and uh, unfortunately don't have time to, to get into the details about everything. But uh, let's progress to the code part. Um, one interesting uh, thing about modern application development in GTK is that we are able to separate the graphic uh, template part from the logic. So you see here in the side that we have this UI file, window.ui, that describes the widgets in this XML format. And then you have the window.py file that has been already bootstrapped, that is just the Python logic that is connected to, the, to, to that. So you imagine about a model viewer controller type of paradigm that you see in, in other stacks. So this is something that GTK kind of has it. So what Builder is doing here is pretty much just binding this browser window class to the template that is defined on that other file. So I can access the, the, the widgets defined on that file and their, their properties and, and such. So let's run things. Once I press play here on the very top, Builder is going to use the Flatpak manifest to run the application. And uh, hopefully it's going to work. <laughs> yes, so this is the basic uh, boilerplate that we get. So it's a GTK window and there's these labels. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna change the label. Why not? So here we have the description of that label on the XML file. You can see the text from the label property. This might be a good uh, moment for us also to look at uh, the documentation. So let's just rapidly modify here to see the changes. And let's get going. We are building a, a web browser, and this web browser is going to be using WebKit-GTK as a, as a web engine. Uh, the reason is because WebKit-GTK is wrapper of the web engine that can be used in GTK. Yeah, so that's how we are embedding a uh, web engine, and web engine is responsible for rendering uh, the web pages. So when you see in a regular browser, you have the, the, the rendering area that is provided by a web engine, and then you have the Chrome that is the browser. So we're going to be doing a Chrome to control an existing uh, web engine. So I'm going to import here this web feature to uh, library, and on my UI file, I'm going to turn uh, the first child that is a label that we saw into a box, so I can place that inside of it. So the boxes don't have labels, so I'm getting rid of it. These attributes are also label-specific attributes. So just a plain box. And then here, when it comes to the code, I am just going to rename the label into the code. So let's uh, create the web view. I'll create a web view instance. Web view, and then I'm going to pack it in that box. So uh, the GTK box in GTK3 has this, this pack start uh, method that allows to put that widget inside of the container widget. Um, this is going away in GTK4, but uh, this example is still using GTK3. So I'm going to edit and uh, we receive these three other parameters. So let's actually get to the to the docs so I can show you exactly where the, 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 the parameters are coming from. So this is the page you'll see uh, with the link to my slides and everything. And the PyG object reference here will be able to tell us that GK box has a method that it's text start and receives firstly a GK widget as the child, and then uh, some properties of the widget, whether they should expand, uh, should fill the container, and some padding, so the distance, the margin, or the spacing between the widget and the container. So we want everything to expand because we want the web view to fill the whole space of the window, and you don't want to have any margin. Uh, with that done, uh, 
I guess we can just uh, tell our widget, our application window, to just show all the widgets that are contained on it. So this should already do something. Actually, we should tell the web view to load a web page. So I'm going to look at the web view documentation and uh, look for the load URI method. Uh, I'm just showing this uh, browsing of the API specifically because uh, that's how uh, a newcomer would approach it, right? They, you don't necessarily know the name of the, the items on the API, and they're just browsing the API reference material and figuring out. So load, load URI receives a string, and this string is just a, a classic web URI. So let's do a load URI, and we are going to load uh, devconf.cz. So time to run our application. Oh, box uh, is not defined, it's a self box, of course, it's a member. Right, so now we have a dummy browser that opens just one website. Uh, it's here, have, we can browse everything, but there's not much I can do if I need to always rebuild the source code to get uh, to get to any other address, right, other than just pointing and clicking it. It's maybe a fun exercise to try to escape the website and get elsewhere. But anyhow, what you usually expect in a browser is an entry for you to type uh, an address, right? So that's the next step we're going to do it. Here in the top, we have a GTK header bar. The header bar is this typical GNOME bar in the top that can have widgets. You see here GNOME Builder, where my cursor is going. Uh, in a typical web browser, you also have all these controls uh, embedded. So it's the very same principle we're going to use in our application. I am not a designer, so I'm going to make a browser that looks like the other browsers. I'm not going to get uh, creative about it. So what I'm going to do is that, that I'm going to pack a child widget to this header bar. The header bar is a container as well. We can see that on the, on the API browser as well. And it's going to be a GTK entry. I'm going to give it an ID so I can reference this in my Python side of the code. And I'm going to follow it URI entry because Naming things is one of the hardest things in computer science. And then I'm going to set the property of the widget to visible. This is basically uh, how I set properties of a widget. I set the property name and then the value of the property. So let's uh, get running in more application. Yes. So you see that there's this entry bar here in the top. Quite dummy, it doesn't do anything. I can type, I can press enter, it's not going to do anything because we haven't connected just yet. Another thing I noticed about it is that it's kind of on the left because the header bar is a special type of container that has uh, a specific child type that allows it to face on the center here, which is uh, usually where the, the title of the application goes. So I'm going to pass a property here to this child type, and the, the type is title. So running again the application as it's uh, center. So at this moment, one of the tools that are very useful for GTK development is the inspector. In the link I put it there, I have some documentation about how to, to, to activate the inspector and, and how to set up the shortcut for it. I already have it on my system that when I press Ctrl Shift I, uh, I have the GTK inspector pop up. So it has a message here in case somebody triggers this by, by accident. And uh, this is specifically just, it is inspired in the, these uh, inspectors that you see on the web view, right? In WebKit, if you press Ctrl Shift something, you also get this web view that you can pick an element on a web page and change its CSS and uh, properties. You can do whatever you want. And this is very nice for uh, interactive uh, development. And GTK has it as well. So I can click on the speaker and select uh, part of the widget on the application. So I'm going to pick this GTK entry that we just added. Here I can see the name of it, various uh, properties of it in terms of you know, size allocation and accessible roles. Uh, I would go into details about the other tabs here if, you, if I had more time. But it, this is usually very useful for us to test uh, an application with other teams, like the high contrast teams, mm -hmm. important for people with accessibility needs, the width attitude, just uh, the, <laughs> uh, the dark variant. So this is very useful. But what I wanted to, to tweak here on the, this GTK uh, entry is actually to have it fill the whole content horizontally. So when I check its properties, I can just toggle them. For instance, the property visible that we just set here before, 
uh, can be easily toggled. They are in alphabetical order. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. so I can turn false and true, and the widget reacts uh, live. So that's that's very nice. Uh, what I wanted to, to explain horizontally. So H expand setting to true expands the whole. That's that's nice. That's a good start. So I'll just go here and make it official by <laughs> expressing it on the widget description. So from now on, these are connected. Uh, since I'm showing you the, the, the inspector, I, another thing you might have noticed is the CSS tag. Uh, GTK uh, style sheets are CSS, which means that if you want to, to tweak the way your application looks, you, need, you can use CSS and it's very powerful. So I could, for one, start by, let's say, setting the background of everything to red. So all the, the containers are, are red now. I could use a specific container uh, selector so I could just say only the boxes are, are red. Uh, let's say do uh, entry, so only the entry is red. And this is very powerful. I could go to extents of the file keyframes for uh, animation. So let's say I want to do a, a siren, like a police siren animation. I could define it as a transition from uh, background red to, oh, actually, I'm starting to the truth, from uh, background blue to background red. And then I am going to just make it for the whole set of widgets, the final animation, the name of that animation, how long it should repeat, and the frequency of it. So now you can see that uh, I can have a transition from one to another in one second, and slow it down or, or anything. Uh, virus Things on, 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 on your desktops are made like this. If you go to the user accounts in, in you know, it's something that I was personally involved in the development. This arrow that follows your user account is also defined by keyframes in CSS. And you can define here, for instance, the linear transition, or if you want it not to be linear, uh, you can specify other function for, for the transition. So it's very powerful. But anyways, we are not here to make funny applications. Uh, I want to actually be able to type addresses here on the top bar and get the page to go elsewhere. So if I go to a GTK entry, uh, I can see that it has a signal called activate. The activate signal is emitted when the user hits the enter key. This is exactly what we need here. So I'm going to connect that signal by going signal name activate, and the handler is going to be the callback that I am going to, to execute as soon as that signal gets emitted. So this is an event-oriented programming, so user clicks a button and a signal is emitted and something reacts to that. So that's how things are all uh, plugged in together. So I'm going to call my method on your I entry uh, callback. Again, being creative and naming things is not a as you I have. So here we need to write the point. We have one, la part. one last For minute. Okay, so I'm going to do really fast. So if I were to define the name of the function here and a Python reference to it, I could uh, just uh, get the URI from that entry. So I could say uh, entry get text and then pass it to this function that we saw here above that loads the page. So we will sell web view load to arrive with that as a path. I also need to indicate that this is a callback, so there is an annotation that does this and connects, and I'm going to run and hope to do this in a minute. <laughs> right. So now the web page is here, and I can type uh, my web page. Press enter. We didn't connect to a progress bar or anything, but uh, it seems to be working. So I will, for instance, be able to go to redhead.com as well. Uh, in the, the presentation link, uh, you can go forward and, 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 and backwards and everything because I also added back and forth buttons, reload buttons, home page buttons, but these are things very easy to implement and you can see on that thing. So yeah, basically that was it. Um, in this link, you have more information if you want to follow along. You can also join us on, on IRC and ask for, for help over there.